Hello everyone. Today we're looking at organization in Final Cut Pro X based on Chapter 4 of the Final Cut Pro X uh, Focal Easy Guide, second edition by Rick Young. And um, I, I know that organizing in your editor might seem like a, kind of a, a boring thing and a waste of time and, you know, um, it'd be much more fun to get in and start editing and applying effects and all that sort of stuff. And uh, I can't agree with you more that it is not the most exciting thing to learn about an editor. But what <laughs> I don't think I can emphasize enough is how incredibly important having a good organizational system is to the success of your videos. I've had all kinds of students come to me and say, I lost all my footage, I had to start over. And it was basically because they didn't have a good organizational system or they didn't understand how the editor organized things and where it put things. And so they were just kind of ignorant about the organization of their projects. Um, and that's, that's kind of a worst case scenario, but even in other areas, if your project is poorly organized, it's gonna be hard for you to find the footage that you want, which means you might forget it exists, never find it, and your video suffers because of your disorganization. So you have lower quality video if you're disorganized. You may also um, just spend a lot more time looking for stuff, getting frustrated and searching for things, and so your project will take longer to edit. And if you have no deadline, then that's fine. It's just a little bit of your life lost looking around for stuff. But if you are in a deadline, you know, then uh, <laughs> either you might not find that footage again or the quality of the video will suffer because you're spending more time looking for footage than you are going in and editing and tweaking things. And the basic fact is that just about any video uh, can take an infinite amount of time for editing if you want to go and tweak every little thing. So the less time you spend trying to figure out where stuff is and sort through stuff and find stuff and the more time the more time you can spend on tweaking the audio and tweaking the edits and getting everything perfect so it is incredibly incredibly important that you be very organized when it comes to to your projects and obviously the longer the project the more important organization is if i'm just quickly throwing together a three or four minute piece that's due in a couple days, yeah, I may not spend a whole lot of time thinking about organization. But when I'm working on a huge project that involves, you know, 50 hours of footage and it's going to be a 90-minute documentary, um, I, I methodically <laughs> approach organization that way, and I spend a lot of time getting things organized. Otherwise, it will just become an impossible mess of stuff to sort through. So you're trying to avoid the needle in the haystack in your projects and that's and organizing is one of the ways that you can do that and Final Cut Pro X has a lot of cool things to and cool tools to help you with organizing your projects as do most editors some things in Final Cut uh, X are things that I personally haven't really seen before and some things you may choose to use not choose to use it's it's up to you so basically the the uh, main ways that Final Cut organizes your projects is into libraries which look like this and let's see if I can zoom in a little bit on that there and just represented by four stars um, basically trying to show you that within this are a whole bunch of stars and the stars are represented by events so this is saying this is made up of a, a number of events and uh, events are just um, collections of of footage and you can organize those collections into folders if you want but uh, you you know your event um, for example in in the documentary I'm working on it might be a particular day of a road trip since it's a road trip documentary or you might I might organize it specifically into one one particular particular event in a day that happens so this is uh, basically the s smallest way that you can divide divide your footage and you know you want to so that, so that you have uh you're organizing so you have a few clips in there if, if you get it down so that you only have one clip in each one of your events you're probably going too specific and if you have a hundred clips in one event then maybe you need to find some way to break that down um and then uh besides that we also have these keyword collections which are kind of an interesting thing and that's something that whoops sorry wrong way um that's something that, there we go, computer, catch up. That's something that is uh, unique to Final Cut 
in my experience. I haven't seen it in, in the other editors that I've used. And, and basically what you can do is assign keywords to clips or to parts of clips and then You'll, they'll be created into these collections so that with just just by clicking on it you can see all the clips that have that particular keyword so that can be another kind of cool way to sort things and it could be a, a neat way to cross-reference things too so maybe you have all sorts of clips sorted into an event um, you know maybe I put all of one day uh, into one event but I want all the shots of me getting pulled over I'm gonna put a keyword in there <clears throat> Um, for you know getting pulled over by the police for going too fast and uh, have that be a keyword and then I could just click on that and I can see all the times all the shots that involve me getting pulled over even though they weren't all on the same day all right you get the point now um, on the in the finder this is what your projects can uh, look I'm sorry your libraries can look like um, and when you're Firing up Final Cut, you could just double click one of these and then that library will open up and you're all good to go to start working. And when it comes to libraries, I would create a new library when I'm working on a project that doesn't have footage that really relates to anything else, any other libraries I've been working on. So, for example, you know, here's a library for the DeLorean Road Trip project and here's a library for family um, footage or something of that nature you know it's there's some potential to be a little overlap and that's fine but these are pretty distinct topics so um, basically my point is um, you when you create a library you're creating you know like a collection of footage assets graphics music whatever that uh, um, are all kind of related in terms of uh, what projects you're going to be creating from them so I wouldn't have one library for ever <laughs> for Final Cut for all projects I would ever do in it because that would start to get pretty big pretty hard to to manage and if at any point I was completely done with footage it would make it a little trickier to get rid of it so you see what I mean you know um, you don't you don't necessarily you might not necessarily want to create a new library every time you create a new project because maybe you're creating a project that's based on footage that you already have pulled into an existing library so you can just um, create maybe another event in that library and create another project that way if it's all pulling from the same footage um, so there are some situations where you'd you'd want to create a new library and other times where you might just want to open an existing library and create a new project within that uh, let's see okay so um, as we're looking at our, our footage and sorting through it, one of the ways that we can um, view our, our raw footage is either in the icon view, which is this. And what's interesting about this is we actually see sort of a film strip of our project. So as I click to get us back into Final Cut Pro, as I scroll through here, and all I'm doing is just moving the mouse. I'm not clicking and dragging or anything it scrolls through my footage and we can also go and look at list view and in this view you'll see things listed obviously with their uh, name and then you still have that um, kind of film strip type view up here where you can do the same thing scroll through it all right two different ways of looking at your clips and you have a little bit of uh, customizable options, uh, particularly in the icon view, in which you can choose how much detail you want to see in that film strip. So you can see if I go to all, that all I see is the one poster frame for that whole video. And if I keep cranking this right to the right, I get into smaller, smaller detail until it's split up into one half second um, frames here and I get a lot more detail. So if you want broad strokes, you could zoom out and very quickly scan through big chunks of your clip. If you want to get more specific, you can drag it to the right. And if you want to go all the way back, you can go to this, in which case the entire video is encompassed in one poster frame. That obviously changes as we scrub through the video. So a couple of different ways you can look at it there. Other thing you can do here, you see we have the little 
speak speech bubble film strip we can click on that and then we have some options for changing the height of our clips and we can show waveform or turn that off this only applies when we're in the icon view and waveform in case you forget this is a picture of your audio where the height of the waveform indicates how loud the audio is and it makes it easier for us to find particular um, sound moments in our video so we can just see okay like all right this is uh this is video of me um on a getting to drive a lamborghini for my 40th birthday thank you very much to my wife we could go through the sound here and see where the where the sound spikes that could be a clue that that's where you know i'm really gunning it for the 45 seconds that i got to drive a lamborghini but still it was an awesome 45 seconds okay so if you want to create a, a brand new library you're starting from scratch in final cut you can go up to file new and then you can see we got multiple options project which would be what we would be editing in an event where we can sort our assets and then a, a brand new library if we want to go that route um, and we also can easily open an existing library and one really nice thing about um, Final Cut X is it has a list here of, of ones we've opened recently so we can quickly go through if we wanted to switch from one library to another by clicking on these or we can hit other if we want to find something else um, that we haven't used recently that's not popping up in these in this recent list we can also go from backup if we are having some trouble maybe our computer crashed or maybe we made a big mistake <laughs> in editing and we didn't, don't know what we did and we want to go to a backup version we can choose that and we can also clear recents if we've got a whole bunch of stuff here we're not going to need soon we can clear that and uh, kind of start from scratch in that regard all right uh, let's see um, what well, another interesting tidbit here the only way that you can delete a library let me make sure that I am all zoomed out again only way that you can delete a library um, in Final Cut is to let me see if I can get back to my come on uh, gotta go okay I remember it's in documents Now you get to watch me navigate through my files here. Movies. All right, thanks for your patience. Only way to delete these is to go into the finder and delete them. Can't do them directly in Final Cut. Probably sort of an attempt at idiot proofing. Um, and honestly, libraries themselves, those, those files right there are not very big. So there's not a huge incentive to delete your libraries in fact there might be there's a fair amount of disincentive because <laughs> once it's gone all those edits all those things that you decided to do are gone and with not much data space saved on your hard drive so what takes up the space is all the footage that is being referenced in those libraries that you eventually would want to delete if you are confident you're not going to need it anymore um, so that's fine if, if you never want to delete your libraries um, that's great of course if the footage is gone and there's no way to get it back it's probably pointless to hold on to the libraries but short story is you can you can only delete the libraries by going into the hard drive and finding them there and tossing them there okay um, reviewing footage so let's we've got our, our footage in um, Final Cut Pro X and we want to go through it and of course that's all fine and dandy that we have our footage in there and I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit more um, here so we have a little bit more detail but um, part of organizing is going through the footage and picking out the parts we want and um, and also labeling our clips very clearly and all that so one of the things that um, one of the the most important shortcuts in every editor I've I've used, the beautiful thing is that this is consistent between every editor I've ever used. Is J, K, and L. So if I click on the clip here and I hit L, 
that will once that will play forward at regular speed if I hit K that will pause and if I hit J that will play in reverse at regular 100% speed now the neat thing about this is you can hit J and L multiple times and it will progressively speed up I guess you can hit these up to five times and that's like your maximum fast forwarding through so when I'm editing I'm doing a whole lot of punching J K and L um, to zero in on the spot that I really like and if it feels like it's not getting there very fast then I can hit J on the keyboard until it's where I want and then hit K to pause and then the nice thing and the reason that we use J K and L um, there's nothing in particular about J K and L that lends himself to being rewind pause and play uh, it's because they're right below I and O which are conveniently located right next to each other um, and are our shortcuts for in and out so that's that's the reason we like to do our play pause and forward keyboard shortcuts right underneath those because it makes it really easy to go back a little bit hit pause marking in go forward a little bit Let's see fast forward a little bit more and hit O and now we have our in and out so JK and L really important great shortcuts applies to every editor I've ever used and the same deal with them is that the more you hit J and the more you hit, hit L up to a point the uh, the faster it will go backwards or forwards all right the other thing we have here is our little skimmer bar which allows us to sort of like when it comes to audio we, we refer to it as scrubbing when you go go through this but you're kind of like skimming through the footage and I'm just putting my mouse over the video and dragging I'm not clicking the button to drag if you do that you start adding an in and an out which is uh, kind of irritating and some editors like Avid um, and I think old Final Cut um, you uh, would or could click and drag um, and so just mousing over would do nothing so it takes a little while to get used to this but just mousing over will scrub through and you have a couple of of options in how you scrub and those shortcuts are listed over here this is the um, skimming um, toggle right there so turn that off and you're no longer skimming and you might like that because maybe you get tired of every time your mouse passes through here it scrolls back or uh, like um, I'm struggling a little bit with the speed of my computer so maybe I don't want um, all that skimming to be going on because it's kind of bogging things down hoping to get this thing upgraded here in a week or two um, so you can turn it on there and then next to it here is this is audio skimming as they call it or generally we would call that scrubbing and what that does is that turns on and off um, the audio with the scrubbing which uh, let me see if you can actually hear that if I unplug my headphones not terribly loud there's not a whole lot of sound in this but that allows you to hear the audio as you're scrubbing through if you're looking for one particular part and that that can be particularly handy if you're maybe you're going through looking for a loud bang that you want to cut out or maybe you're trying to locate the spot just where someone begins talking you can turn that on generally though it's pretty irritating so I would go ahead and leave that off you can leave the audio skimming on but the I mean the video skimming but the audio skimming is probably gonna drive you a little bit nuts you can go ahead and turn that off and then you don't have to worry about it so much now so you, let's say you're you're going through your footage again I I kinda prefer the list view but um, one of the ways that Final Cut lets you control your uh, or organize your your footage is by um, indicating clips or sections of clips that are your favorite you can remove a rating if you decide you don't like it and you can also reject a selection and so the cool thing is you can do that for an entire clip you can say I like this whole clip cool great congratulations glad you got a uh, great clip or you can go into the clip mark a certain section and say I just like this part or I don't like this part you can reject it you see we get a red 
line there and um, say that's that's a terrible part hate that part never want to see that part again so this is a, a pretty cool way that you can grab go through particularly like a, maybe if you had a long clip you could say you know I really um, this is a 20 minute interview and I'm gonna go through and pick parts that I like and I don't like and then as you can see the nice thing is that these all get listed underneath the clip if we click the little disclosure triangle and this is our keyword for this whole clip is Lambo Drive but then we have favorite and then the nice thing is more than that we can rename it and say uh, drive away there you go and so now not only have we indicated that we like this little section of the larger Lambo clip but we've also given it a name so we can find it more easily other cool things in here it shows us that this particular what portion is used which uh, a lot of this <laughs> is used it looks like maybe the whole clip is used then we have another favorite there we have the portion that's rejected another favorite and we could rename these all however we like and so again you can do that for a whole clip you can do that for um, just parts of clips and let me see here if uh, yeah I've got some more some more clips in here let's say that we hate this whole clip for whatever just for simplicity's sake we can click on it we can say reject that clip and then it, it will um, disappear when we choose hide selected and that if yours was default set to hide selected a uh, rejected I'm sorry when you click on a clip and you reject it it disappears you don't see it anymore and so of course you might strike a little fear in your heart if you're not <laughs> if you're not familiar with the fact that in the editor it's almost impossible to actually delete footage most editors or every editor I've used is you have to work pretty hard to actually get rid of your raw footage so that must couldn't be gone completely and it's not it's just hidden from this view and if you want to see it go up here and choose either all clips or you could go and just see which ones you rejected and these are obviously I didn't reject all of Lambo I just rejected a portion of it but these two have been rejected and so I can clear that by clicking on the empty star and then when I go back to all clips it will show them all but I can also go to um, hide rejected and it will still be there because we have removed their rejection so that's some really cool ways you can sort through clips and you know it, it, it might be that you want to reject the clip but you don't want to completely delete it I mean who knows maybe maybe there's a chance that you you want it down the road but it's unlikely um, so kind of saves you that that hassle of deleting it or the hassle of deleting it and deciding you actually want something from it um, and also you know it could be a cool way to um, the fact that you can select parts that you like you know can really allow you to quickly isolate one part of a larger clip here this is some drone footage we shot of the DeLorean before the drive to Alaska and say we like that and now that is all nicely um, isolated from the rest of the clip and we can we could just go to favorites and just see the those portions that I selected that I liked so when I click on this all I see up here is that portion that I indicated that was my favorite I don't see the entire clip all right so it's cutting out a lot of clutter that that I don't want <clears throat> so that that is really nice I think it's it's pretty important to look for this little pop-up menu and be aware of how to use it uh, let's see what else are we talking about here <clears throat> and of course just remember um, you can rename anything by clicking on it to select it if it's not already selected and then clicking and being a little bit patient um, double clicking is just gonna load it up here so what you want to do is click and then click and wait and you can rename it and as you saw me do before you know favorite isn't wildly helpful so I should click and change that to you know drive by something great like that and that's one of the key ways that we can sort things and label them in um, 
Final Cut so that they're uh, much easier to sort through and find. Now another thing you can do, because sometimes just adding, uh, changing the name isn't practical, is that we can add notes to our different uh, clips here in Final Cut. I'm going to see if I can zoom in here a little bit for you, make that a little bit bigger. And uh, I'm using a laptop, so I'm having to do the two-finger side scroll in order to get back. You can see that the slider bars do show up once you're sliding with the two-finger scroll, at least on my computer. So you can grab those once they're moving. But once you let go um, and click anywhere, they normally disappear. <laughs> that one maybe because I grabbed it's holding on. Um, but the, the problem is that you have to do the initial slide. You see this one disappears. Um, you have to do the initial slide to get them to show up. And then once you grab them, you can work on them. But you can see this one's disappeared. So anyway, um, using the, the two-finger side scroll to go through and look at all my columns. And these are all here for you. All right? So if they don't help you at all, you can remove them. You can customize them. And you can move them around. If you want content created before duration, just click and drag that column over like that. And what we can do, so you see we go through here. We have camera name. I don't really care about camera name. I don't particularly care about roles or camera angle right now. So we can control click, right click if you have it enabled. And here's where you can choose which columns you're going to see. Unfortunately, it's not in alphabetical order. So you'll have to sort around a little bit. But you can see that we have notes. Whoops. So now notes is available there. And we go back and we say, I do not care about camera angle. I do right click. I do not care about roles. And then um, we can move notes over if we want to be able to see the name of our clip a little bit more easily next to notes and of course we can mouse over the edges and drag it down so I can say you know oh this this clip here is fantastic similar thing click once and then click and wait a second and we can say fantastic and that's our little notes and then we can search for fantastic later on if we want to so sometimes when I'm editing, I'll come up with a, a system like, oh, this one's going to be 1 out of 10. And then I could, you know, sort of similar to favoriting. But unfortunately, with favoriting, it's either it's favorite or you hate it or you're, like, ambiguous about it. So if you come up with kind of a scale, you could enter that into the notes and say, that is a 7. And you could even, you know, say more about it. Um, but you could just leave that there. And now we know that that's a 7. And if you want to, you can sort by that. And we are sorting the other, there we go. If we sort the other direction, it'll pop up. And then you could quickly see, you know, your ratings. Oh, these are 10 shots, 9, whatever, all the way down to 1s. So notes is uh, um, another handy feature when it comes to sorting your footage. Helps you get some more information than you can include in just the name. So, um, and that's all searchable. Now, of course, the DJI 0057, 56, all that is not particularly helpful um, to name. But, I mean, in, in my case, I happen to know that DJI stands for the drone, the DJI Phantom that we were using. But let's say I've got a whole bunch of clips, and either it's not that important that they all have specific names, or I just want to give them some kind of name um, before I go through and give them specific names so that... I can differentiate them from all the other clips that I have. Well, we can batch rename clips. You don't have to go in and click and change it and click, click, change, click, wait, click, change. We could do a whole bunch at once. And you do that over here by clicking on info. Let's see if we have video or share. Not necessarily going to work. But when we click on info, we get this apply custom name stuff. We can click on that and we can go to edit if we want. And then you get a whole bunch of information here. Um, clip date and time um, is one way that you could um, 
change the name of a whole bunch of clips. What, we're, what we want to do is custom name. So we're going to make up a name for all these clips and then add a counter, which means we're, everything's going to be labeled with a custom name and then with a number at the end that goes up. And we could actually um, choose <laughs> if we want six, yikes, six digits uh, to work with. That's a little bit crazy. So the first clip would be, and this is just something I entered in a minute ago, but we can we can change the custom name to um, Drone Pre-Trip. Yeah, it's not the greatest name, but we'll call it that. So there's some pre-trip drone footage. The first one will be one, then it will be pre drone pre-trip two, et cetera, et cetera. What we're doing here is just creating the the um, custom name settings. We are not actually applying it yet. We have to do this first and say, hey, later on, this is what I'm going to want clips to be named. So this is a little bit confusing, but you hit OK, and now we have that custom name. It's all banked here in the apply custom name. So now what we have to do is grab all the clips that we want to apply it to. So we can click the first one in the list, go all the way, all the way, all the way down to the bottom, hold down shift, click the bottom, and then hit apply custom name. And then we get to choose which of those ones that uh, were there that we want to apply. And remember we modified custom name with counter. So we hit that. And now if we go back here, can see, oh, there's some <laughs> delay in my zoom. Sorry about that. We can see that they all have that name. Let me get them sorted here appropriately. And it's one drone pre trip, three, four, five, so on and so forth, all the way to the last clip that we labeled. So that is a cool way to save some time. Um, and get a whole bunch of clips relabeled quickly. And then once you, once you see how to do that once, you can do it for other things and you don't have to do the custom name thing. Maybe you like some of the other settings that you could use there and, uh, and rename them that way. So that's, that's a handy way to um, custom name a whole bunch of clips all at once. Now, um, oh, and then if we wanted to search for those later, so let's say I got a whole bunch of stuff in here and I want to look, sir, so where was that drone pre-trip stuff? Of course, I'd have to be able to remember um, my, my names. Then all of that stuff will appear right here. Um, and it makes it a quick and easy way to go through my event and find all of those particular clips that have that name. All right, great. Okay, now let's talk about keywording a little bit. This is a area that's particularly unique to Final Cut as far as I'm aware. And uh, I do think it's a, a cool thing and it may be something that applies to you, doesn't apply to you. You might find it useful, you might not find it useful. But let's say, um, here I've got some more clips and these are shot with a different drone. These are shot with a racing drone so it can really like keep up with the speed of the of the car. And let's say that I I want to tag all these with a with a keyword. So where we can go through and, and mess with keywords is this actual keyword editor icon here. And you can see I've already created race drone. Let's go ahead and delete that. And uh so we can say I want to I'm going to tag that with race drone. So we go into our um, keyword shortcuts and we can say race. Oops, race drone. And then enter. And what's now? So what else is going on here? What's going on here is that these are all keyword shortcuts, uh, keyboard shortcuts that allow you to in a keystroke apply a keyword to a clip, uh, to a raw clip, um, without having to go in and click on it and change the actual keyword. So watch this, this is kind of cool. So we've applied that keyword to that first clip. 
whoops, and I'm going to zoom out, move to the right a little bit. And then what we can do is go and click on, could shift click these other three if we want, and then we can hit control one, and that should apply. Well, I guess it didn't take on that first one. We can hit control one again. You, you can see it's kind of neat. I don't know if you caught that. The, the I'll do it for Lambo. We'll call that. Watch, watch up here, and you'll see like the crazy keyword like fly onto it. If it it's already got a keyword, it's not letting me do it to that one. Let's see if I can do this one. Control one, race drive. Woo, flies up there, and then when we click on it, or sorry, race drone. You see that the keyword is there, and we can actually go in and delete. Whoops. Uh, remove that keyword if we want. Gives us a little puff of smoke. And then the neat, neat thing is that once we apply a keyword to something, it starts showing up as a keyword collection. So when I click on that, I can see everything that has the keyword race drone. And you can delete these two if you um, find there's just no way you'd ever want to mess with that keyword collection. And looking at it, I can see, oh, Lambo's got the race drone. Um, can I go into the editor and we're going to delete race drone. We're going to delete the, <laughs> we go into the keyword editor, keyword, delete it. Did I just add it a bunch of times? Is that why it keeps showing up? Keyword editor. All right, finally got rid of it. We can so we can go in and delete those keyword um, that we don't want. If for some reason you want to get rid of one, um, so that's that's kind of cool. Going back to this keyword editor, so anything you enter in here up through nine uh, becomes a keyboard shortcut. So as you're going through your footage and you say, oh, and it could be you know the keyword is awesome. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, or, you know, day two, or um, what, whatever you want, whatever's going to help you. And you just hit that, that control keyboard and, um, or control one through nine to apply whatever keyword you want to stuff. And that is pretty cool. And then it auto generates these keyword collections. So, you know, if you want, you could leave this off in the corner so you can remember what the keyword shortcuts are, are or if it's a big project, you might scribble them down somewhere. Um, but that that is kind of a, a cool thing and then of course control zero would remove all the keywords so that's basically what the text talks about in terms of organizing things and um, just you know some things I would like to add um, obviously we can rename events here too and um, that's important um, but it's it's also it's not just the organization of your clips within the editor. That is very important. I feel like the text covers that pretty well. But it's also incredibly important to organize your clips effectively um, in the finder or in, in your hard drive. So that um, when, you're, when you're bringing clips in from your SD card and all that, you know where those clips are and you know how <laughs> how to find them and you know that they're not getting spread out over hard drives all over the place and so that will just take some practice and remember when you go to um, import if I can get it to wake up here a little bit it's coming there we go um, you have these options between copy to library leave files in place just be aware of what you're doing. Are you going to copy it to the library? So you're going to make a whole nother version of that clip and put it in the library. And do you know where your library is? And um, is it on a drive that is big enough and fast enough for you to be editing with? Or do you want to leave them in place? Remember, if you choose leave it in place and it's on an SD card, when you pull the SD card out, it's gone. So are you going to copy files onto your hard drive and then... Um, leave them in place when you bring them in or are you going to um, have the have final cut copy them from your SD cards all right so I, I imagine this can be kind of confusing and so feel free to ask me questions if if you're 
sort of struggling with file organization. But my point is that even outside of the, the application itself, you need to be keeping track and organizing your footage and understanding this sort of um, complicated process we call workflow, which is um, how you go from beginning to end in a project. What do you do first? How do you handle the data on your SD cards? How do you handle your hard drives? How do you process the footage through your editor? That's that's the workflow, and it's important to do it right because if, if you mess it up, there can be a whole world of pain. So organizing within Final Cut Pro is important, really important, and there's lots of cool ways that you can do it. But also, organizing it on your hard drive is equally as important because <laughs> if you can't find the footage, you can't very well get it into Final Cut. And if you move stuff around or you don't connect a drive, it's going to go offline and Final Cut may not know where it is. So it's important to be organized on both sides, behind the scenes and within the editor itself. All right, if you got any questions, uh, let me know. This was a pretty basic introduction to organizing and uh, on a larger more complicated project uh, you'll you may want to come up with your own system or uh, there are certainly other ways that you can organize all these crazy elements in terms of graphics and music and all that kind of thing you know organizing not just having it all in one file for music but maybe it's music organized by mood and and graphics organized by which section of the program that they're in so you can see how it can get a little bit crazy but it's uh, it's really important and I, th I think Final Cut X really sets you up to do well when it comes to organizing so I hope you enjoy it and I hope that you will make use of some of these tools thanks